This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Condo Insider. It's Thursday at three o'clock. We do this show each week to help educate association board members and owners on a variety of association topics. Let me assure you, this is not a drill. This is the real show. We're gonna have interesting information. You don't need to take cover, but you should take a lot of notes because there's a lot of interesting information available to, to us today. That being said, um, you almost cannot turn on the TV or read the newspaper without hearing about fire safety, primarily because of the major fire recently at the Marco Polo building. And fire safety is important to all of us, whether you live in a home, an apartment, a condominium. And so I've asked one of my good friends, Ron Amamiya, to come today to talk about options available to residents to provide fire safety for their home. Because as an industry, we want you to know we support all the various issues regarding fire safety. The big push on high rises has been, do we need to have sprinkler systems? And that's the debate we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. But anyway, I'd like to welcome Ron to the show. Welcome, Ron. When I know who you are, and a lot of people out there know who you are. Why don't you remind us a little bit about your great uh, history here in Hawaii? Well, thank you very much for inviting me to, onto the show, uh, Richard. I am a product of the pineapple field, shall I say. I was born and raised in Wahewa, spent my first 22 years um, in Whitmore Village outside of Wahewa. And then I went into the Army for two years as a Signal Corps officer, uh, then went off to law school at Hastings College of the Law, University of California, San Francisco. Thereafter came back to Hawaii, started my <clears throat> career in government. I was at one time the consumer protector of the state then the Automobile No-Fault Commissioner, and finally I was <coughs> the Attorney General for four years from 1974 to 1978. Did you enjoy your, your, your government service? I did, I did because you were able to do things which made life better for people, and that's, that's what was, that was very uh, satisfying to me. Yeah, I think it's interesting, so I'm gonna say thank you for our service that I feel government officials, uh, and particularly even legislators, often get a lot of heat and a lot of negative when they're trying to do the best for the people of Hawaii. And of course, there's a variety of interests in our state. So uh, I think there's sacrifices when you uh, work in government and as a legislator. And so I thank all of them and you for uh, representing the people of Hawaii, which I know you did very well for that period of time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the call. Now, now, I also understand you're uh, the attorney for No Fire Technologies. Uh, can you tell us who they are? Yes. No Fire Technologies <clears throat> is out of the state of New York. Its founder, inventor is Sam Gottfried. Dr. Sam has two doctorate degrees, one in uh, physics and the other in electrical engineering. Uh, he's one of the foremost fire science experts in the world. And um, he has a product called No Fire, uh, like the, the company name, which um, is totally environmentally safe. It's a water-based paint, totally environmentally safe. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, just, just um, uh, shall I say, a wonderful product which can be applied um, in, in, various, in various applications. We're gonna get back to that product in a minute, but I'd like to just take a minute to uh, remind everybody that a lot of the dialogue we've had recently is because of the Marco Polo fire, and some people forget that the first interstate building on uh, King Street had a major fire a few years ago. We've certainly read in the paper about the hellacious fire in London of the apartment building and, and the major building in Dubai, and. We as the industry support fire safety and looking at all the various options that are available to help protect the people, the occupants of their unit or home or wherever it may be. The issue I'd like to just take a minute to brief everybody on, and I'm gonna frankly have to go to my phone because to tell you, this is minutes old, this information I have, and it has to do 
with the status of the city council with respect to Bill 107, which was a program to create more fire safety standards in condominiums. Let me begin by saying it this way. This bill will be heard with the amendments on January 23rd at 1 p.m. And it's a regular council meeting, so there's, I'm gonna say, I haven't counted them, 10 or 20 items on the agenda. But let me tell you the proposed amendments on this fire safety bill and how it affects condominiums. And I'm, it's, it's quite lengthy, the amendments, so I'm gonna invite you to go online to the city council and look at the agenda, and you can specifically read the exact language, so I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit on the most important parts as I read them with only a couple of minutes to study it, uh, on what the proposed bill modification is. Under Bill 107, the original intent was to require buildings to conduct a fire safety matrix, where you go in and they look at the fire door, they look at the alarm system, they look at the, what I'm gonna call vertical penetrations, where the pipes and the floors don't meet, that's the fire hazard, that open space, so I'm gonna call it fire stops, and the need for sprinkler systems. And what each building would do is hire a professional to complete this fire matrix, and if you got a passing score, you did not have to install sprinklers. If you failed to get a passing score, you had to install sprinklers over some specified period of time. I wanna say it was 12 years, but I may not be correct on that. So that's kind of where it stood about a month ago. So here's where it stands today. The proposed amendment, which we voted on on January 23rd. First of all, the buildings that are gonna be required to address this issue are not all of the 350 buildings without fire sprinkler systems. If you're below, I'm gonna say 10 floors or less, and again, I'm gonna refer you to the bill because uh, those numbers may not be exactly accurate, but uh, the intent of what I'm saying will be correct. Uh, then you're, and you have exterior corridors, that is the safety exits, the outside exterior hallways are on the outside of the building, not in the middle, then you're not gonna have to do a, a matrix and you're gonna be exempt. And I've been told that that leaves about 150 buildings remaining that would have to do a matrix. And again, if you didn't pass, get a passing score, then in fact, you would have to put sprinklers in. And we've all heard the potential costs that some say as low as 4,000 and some say as high as 50,000 to do that. And there's been a lot of publicity uh, against this because of the affordability factor. Well, this proposed amendment, which I just read a moment ago, basically says that each building that falls in that category must do with a licensed uh, engineer, architect, the official fire matrix form within three years of the passage of the bill. So that means all of those buildings within three years would have to um, do the matrix, and if they failed, would have to then put sprinklers in the building. That being said, this bill provides what I'm gonna call an opt-out program for the owners. That within three years of the matrix being completed, if the association held an owner's meeting of the owners, and a majority of all those owners voted to opt out of the fire sprinkler system requirement, they would be allowed to opt out of the fire sprinkler system requirement because of a vote of the owners. That being said, if the owners opted out, they would need to post signs in the building that the building is not sprinklered. They would have to notify through real estate disclosures the fact that the building is not sprinklered to all future owners and take these types of actions, maybe even filing documents with the Bureau of Conveyances, not acknowledging the fact that they've opted out of the fire system. So there would be a program for owners who consciously wanted to opt out of the program to do so within three years of the matrix, which presumably gives that building a chance to study, get bids, evaluate what the true cost would be, allowing it up to the owners to make that decision with respect to opting out. If they did not opt out of it, they're given 12 years to put the fire sprinkler systems in, again, for those buildings that failed the matrix. 
because there may be opportunities by upgrading the fire alarm system, putting uh, no fire paint in, by uh, correcting some of the uh, pukas on the floors with fire stops, you could get additional points to, to, to uh, not have to put the sprinkler system in. Now I've just dealt with a very complex subject in a matter of minutes after a fast reading about three minutes before this show began. I would recommend you go online to the City Council agenda. You can read the specific provisions of the proposed amendment to the bill, which would allow a uh, mandate of a, a matrix to be conformed, but allow various methods to either by taking fire safety prevention methods or by opting out of the sprinkler requirement by vote of the owners uh, to make alternate adjustments. So I'm not going to spend a lot more time on it other than to say there looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel that associations will be given options to address this in an affordable way to uh, not necessarily sprinkle the building, although we all realize that sprinklers are a great addition and a great fire safety system. That being said, everyone talks about sprinklers, 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 sprinklers. Mm -hmm. What else can we do? We have an alternative, which is <clears throat> the fire retardant paint. There are only two or three truly fire retardant paints in the world, of which no fire is one. And <clears throat> in a nutshell, if you paint your walls and ceiling, you can spray it, uh, you would have approximately 30, 45 minutes. Uh, if, let's say if a fire starts right here, uh, you'd have 30, 45 minutes before the fire becomes a huge fire, uh, basically a flash over. Then, then it'll go all over. So you would have time. If you paint your walls and your ceiling with no fire, you would have that period of time to get out of your unit. So it basically is a fire retardant that buys you time with respect to um, uh, being able to uh, escape. Escape. Yes, that's what. And it of is. course, there's other things that can buy time, such as fire alarm systems. Mm -hmm. Again, the fire stops if you're in a high rise. Mm -hmm. uh, new elevator systems. That all of these things should be considered. And back to the matrix is what is, is going to be required for associations to take a fresh look at this mm -hmm. within three years. When I say associations, I want to remind everybody that there's residential apartment buildings. City-owned apartment buildings, all of them have the same requirements of the fire safety inspection and matrix as do condominium associations. But on that note, I have a lot of questions about your product. Yes. We're going to take a short break for one minute, and we'll be right back to get in detail about no fire. Thank you. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by, and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sound. I like this music. So we do it. Welcome back to Condo Insider. We're talking about fire safety with Ron Amamiya. At the beginning of the show, I took a brief moment to talk about the update on the proposed amendments to the city council bill uh, that began the mandate fire sprinkler systems. And I only had that information for about three minutes before the show started. So I did my best to kind of give you an overview, and again, the bill itself will tell you accurately what it said, and I hope I didn't egregiously misquote anything that I, I briefly read. But what we're talking about is, beside the huge cost for fire sprinkler systems, 
you know, sometimes estimated 30 to 50,000 a unit. There are other alternatives in general that apply not only to condo associations or apartment buildings, but to single family homes to protect your family, which we all want to do. We're talking about no fire, which is a paint that can be applied. And I'm gonna ask Ron some questions about it because it opens up a lot of questions to me. So, okay, so we wanna look at putting a paint protective product on in my home right. or in my condo. Yes. Where can I apply it? Can I apply it on the concrete, drywall? Where, where can I yes. apply it? You can apply it on any surface except uh, wall, wall covering, wall, wall, wall paper, paper. wallpaper, um, because <clears throat> that would, if you paint it over that, uh, it can come off, you know, as you can imagine. So you have to take off the wallpaper and paint after that. And so I can put it on my drywall or if I had a concrete wall in between my unit and I could, I could, I could put it on the concrete ceilings if I needed to. Yes. And so it can be applied anywhere. Anywhere. Anyway. Okay. And so, how hard is it to apply? Is this, is this something that takes special equipment, complicated, or is this basically a paint that you're going to use roller and brusher, sprayers to, to do it? Can, you, can, you can spray it. And um, it's just like any other water-based paint. This is water-based. And it's totally environmentally safe. You don't have to wear any masks or anything like that, you know, when you apply and <clears throat> it'll dry in three hours, and it'll cure in 24 hours. So let's just say, because I'm a decorator kind of a guy, and I want to have all my custom colors of paint, mm -hmm. can I apply a regular latex paint over it, or yes, sir. afterwards, so I can get the, so I have the prior protection underneath, but I be able to decorate my home in the colors I want it to be? Yes, you can, except that you, we don't want you to put more than you know the, the regular amount of paint on it. We don't want you to double on it, on it shall we say. That, that'll, that may cause problems. So if you bought a, a paint, a regular latex paint at the Home Depot, yes. and I just put the <coughs> standard coating on it, yes. um, I would be able to, Absolutely. after painting it with no fire, still have fire retardant protection, but at the same time then be able to have the custom colors to make my home with my passion pink walls or whatever it may be. Yeah, yes, I, can. I, I can have my passion pink wall. Can I apply wallpaper over it? No, no, we don't want wallpaper because it's, it'll, um, uh, well, shall, shall we say, take away the protection, you know? We right. Do not want, we do not want wallpapers on it. So it's basically a paint product where you can put paint over the top of it and, and, uh, um, uh, some of these paints you know you get from Home Depot have the primers already in it. Is that that paint okay too? Uh, uh, well, this paint can be can be a primer too, but right. the, the primer and the final product. Right. You know, yes. Okay. So we talked about this paint. You know, we we've heard for years about the issue of lead paint problems and probably one of the problems of doing fire uh, uh, protection systems like sprinklers that. You have to deal with asbestos and lead paint remediation. Does this product have any health hazards? Or if I had to someday paint a second coat or a third coat on, is there something I have some expensive removal process? Or is there any kind of issues with regard to this product that would make it really expensive or complicated to, to make a change? Like I just had to paint my house 10 years later and change the color. Uh, is there anything complicated about this that would really increase the cost or make it a humbug to deal with it? No, no, and uh, you know it. Once you paint, it'll last a long time because it's thicker than the, the normal paint. You know, um, ten years, fifteen years, would, uh, you'd be you'd have the protection for that period of time. So, I was watching the TV the other day, and I was watching uh, one of these uh, shows and. The, where people bring in, I don't like to mention other products because I might get in trouble, but um, where the, the people making a presentation were trying to convince these group of investors to, to, to buy their product and it was like a, a, a vitamin or something like that and they got into, well how do you know that really works? Has there been any testing on this project by reliable agencies that say 
this really works? Has fire departments looked at this? Or mm -hmm. I mean, or or I know that uh, the doctor who invented it is very proud of it and is very um, educated. But do we have any independent testing or knowledge about this that 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 we can uh, say to the people out there that this is really good stuff? Absolutely. Um, all, all the test approvals are, are in this book. But let me read some of the entities. That underwriter, underwriters, laboratories, intertech laboratories, the U.S. Navy for ships and submarines, U.S. Coast Guard, Southwest Research Institute, Master Paint Institute, Lloyd's Register, U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and states, um, especially California and New York. These are all given their stamp of approval and certification to the product. It makes me want to make a joke about when you're talking about the nuclear testing <laughs> and our recent bomb scare that would this protect us against the, <laughs> the nuclear ballistic medical that never showed up? And I know the answer is no, but it makes me, I don't know, my bizarre mind think that through. So, so this had extensive testing, what you're saying, and, and it, is, is, uh, it can be used. How about our building code or anything under state laws or anything that prevents someone from using it under Hawaii law or our building code? No, no, absolutely not. It passes all, all our codes that we have. And knowing condo owners the way I do, when something like this comes up, you know what they all say, what the first question is? It's always the same thing. The cost? How much does it cost? <laughs> you know, is, this, is this an expensive product? Or, no. or? It will cost the homeowner $3,000 to, to do the complete painting um, for a 1,000 square foot unit, $3,000. Now that include the ceiling and the walls? And Absolutely. All through the whole thing. For the whole, all, all, all the rooms. So it adds about $3,000 to the cost, but then protects your family and everybody from, uh, or gives you time. It's not going to prevent the fire. You know, fires can start by the sofa or the stove or whatever. What's going to happen is this is going to prevent the fire from spreading rapidly. Yes. And so people can get out or maybe even fight the fire if it's, mm -hmm. if it's still in its infant's infantile stages because you and I are talking before the show and if you can mind me share with our audience again that one of the problems is the way fires spread is because of ordinary paint for lack of a better word. Yes. Tell, tell us about that a little yes. bit. Yes. Ordinary paint is a great source of energy to the fire. So if let's say this burns and if for some reason it gets onto the wall which is not painted with a product like no fire it can be within a matter of minutes that the fire will spread and cause flashover, and it'll just go, you know, try to get out and burn everything else all around that particular unit and or, or room. Uh, but the paints are a great source. It feeds the fire, let's put it that way. It seems to me if you have a retardant that slows down the spread of a fire, Beside the personal safety things, you can get out quickly. Right. It, in some ways, protecting property too, because you're going to have less damage if you get the fire put out quickly. Absolutely. You, you know, so you really have a, a property damage side to it that really isn't our primary concern. It's certainly a mm -hmm. concern, but uh, it seems to me life safety is always the most important thing. You know, and uh, and the idea behind it, we uh, we were debating this on the uh, among from condo managers of the day, that you start looking at a fire in a condo. Well, the condo may or may not have a fire extinguisher in it that the owner owns or put in himself. Well, that's good if you have one. Certainly it helps, uh, particularly for kitchen fires. But then in typically in the hallways of all these condos, there's uh, uh, um, extinguishers, mm -hmm. as well as a fire hose mm -hmm. uh, from a wet standpipe. And then there's dry stand pipes for the uh, fire department to hook up to. Well, typically, most people say, and the fire department says, they don't really want you fighting the fire. That doesn't mean a low-grade fire, you can take your extinguisher and it's small and containable, you shouldn't <laughs> put it out with an extinguisher. But if you start to see a fire that's really somewhat hot or, or quickly growing, mm -hmm. they don't really want you fighting the fire. They want you to get the heck out of there because the smoke will kill you, you know? Right. And so... Um, even though we have those safety devices, we would caution our users to realize that 
your family safety is number one, and uh, depending on the circumstances, you may choose to grab an extinguisher if it's a small enough fire, but mm -hmm. never put yourself in danger because fires spread quickly and the smoke spreads quickly and it, it becomes a real issue. Absolutely. So, so, so we have this, about 3,000 unit. We have a product that's got all these safety inspections. Add some cost to the unit, fire retardant. Where do you get it? How do you get it here in Hawaii? Yes, uh, <clears throat> there is a, uh, a distributor. Uh, he will be become active with this paint. Uh, where, Painter's Warehouse is the name of the uh, distributor here. So, he, uh, you know, he doesn't have it right now, but <clears throat> he will when, as, as time goes on. So it's coming. It is coming, yes. I do want to say, you know, I've had some experience watching videos about no fire and seeing reports of different fire departments, and it's got quite of an impressive credentials. That being said, we as a, as a show don't endorse any product. We think it's up to each person to do their own evaluation of what's good for their particular property and looking at the costs and the, the tests themselves and, and make their own decisions. So although we think this product's got a lot of potential, uh, we're not fire safety experts and we're not here to specifically endorse a product um, other than to say this is something that's worth worthy consideration by people who may have fire safety concern. We're kind of at the end of the show, so what's your final comments you want to make? Yes, I just wanted to uh, make a <clears throat> comment about asbestos. We can paint over it, even if you have asbestos in the unit, we can paint over it without um, requiring abatement. And as compared to if you're going to install a sprinkler, you would have to abate. <clears throat> you know, well, that will save a lot of money. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show today on Condo Insider. And we thank you again for all your service to all the people of Hawaii when you worked in government. And I know you're a very prominent local lawyer. And we hope you'll come back soon. And we want to thank all of our viewers for watching Condo Insider. As I said last week, our legislature uh, was called into session yesterday. Next week, we'll have the current list of what we think the hot topics are for condos before the 2018 legislature. Aloha, and thank you for watching Condo Insider.